Never stand with your back towards the open. How many times do I have to tell you that, huh? In chapter 1, you can also find a scene of Gurney Halleck advising Paul Atreides to never stand his back to his enemy because the perpetrator can slowly come from behind and perform a surprise attack on him. Don't stand with your back to the door. How many times do we have to tell you? We're losing men. To rats. You should not leave the security perimeter! Security perimeter? The rats are already inside! The Fremen demon might be with them! Why Glossoraban has so much hatred for the rats in Arrakis? To be honest, he was not talking about rats. He was perhaps talking about the guerrilla fighters known as the Fadaikins. These people are infamous for hiding beneath the sand like the Muad'Dib rats and then breaking out of the sand to perform a surprise attack. None of us, even dying of thirst, would ever drink this water. This is sacred. These guys have 38 million deciliters of fresh water in the reserve and if I just drink 2 liters of water every day, it will take around 525,000 years for me to finish all of that water. Which means the Fremen people don't have any scarcity of fresh drinking water and then they have thousands of more water reservoirs like that scattered all around Arrakis. And yet, these people are not permitted to drink that water. You know why? It's all because of religious superstition. These people believe that this water is sacred and it should only be utilized by the Lisan al Gaib, who is going to transform their planet into a green paradise. These people are so much blinded by religious faith that they have decided the fate of their life on the actions of an imaginary prophet from the outer world who is going to come and free them from all of their misery. In chapter 1, you can also get to see the Fremen people wasting their water equivalent of 100 people on some so-called sacred palm trees. They believe that the palm trees over there symbolize a religious hope that one day a prophet will come and turn their old dream into reality. Each one of these drinks every day the equivalent of five men. Should we remove them? Save the water? No, 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 no. These are sacred. These people are so delusional that they are failing to understand why this water is more important for those 100 desperately thirsty people rather than those so-called sacred palm trees. Lady Jessica said the exact same thing two more times in the previous chapter of this movie. shall be known among us as Usul. After watching the amazing fighting skill and fearlessness of Paul Atreides, he was given a nickname spelled as Usul. Now, Usul is a Chakobza word which translates to someone or something that holds the central power or inspiration for something. It can also mean the central character of a story. Father, I found my way. Paul Atreides says that he has found his way, but he has found his way to exactly what? He has found his way to recognize and accept his responsibilities. In chapter 1, his father, later Atreides, told him that one day his responsibilities will find him and then Paul will have to recognize his true calling. A great man doesn't seek to lead. He's called to it. And he answers. And, as you can see right now, the responsibility of the family of Paul Atreides as well as the Fremen people have found its way to him and thereafter he has decided to accept it. Look, right there, Spice. Arrakis is so beautiful when the sun is low. Over here, Shani is describing the beauty of Arrakis to Paul Atreides. And in chapter 1, you can also get to see a footage of Shani in the beginning of the movie describing the beauty of Arrakis with almost a similar kind of desert terrain footage. My planet Arrakis is so beautiful when the sun is low. Rolling over the sands, you can see spice in the air. I'll be waiting for you. All of us. You hear that voice? This is the collective voice of the female ancestors of Paul Atreides. In chapter 1, you can also get to hear the same kind of ancestral voice whispering into the ears of Paul Atreides. A friend will help you. Follow the friend. 
Now, you may also have a question on why Paul Atreides used to hear the voices of the female ancestors only. What about the male ancestors? To be honest, this question actually doesn't have a very convincing answer in the actual book. Rauta Harkonnen said the exact same thing to the face of Paul Atreides in the climax fight before dropping on the ground. Impressive indeed. Impressive? What do you find impressive inside this boy? He literally scuffled with three people inside the gladiator arena and surprisingly two of them had been drugged. On the other hand, the third guy was not drugged but it looks crystal that this guy was starving for many days. So a pale chrome dome like him who is consistently using cheat codes to win his fight cannot be considered impressive. The Emperor helped me destroy their traitors and his own army to the cause. A serious crime. The Emperor gave his Sardaukar military to help the Harkonnens in the ambush and the Atreides. Now, the other great houses said nothing to the Harkonnens for this attack, but if they get to find out that the Emperor helped the Harkonnens in the ambush, he will be considered a convicted criminal. Why is it that way? The ambush led by the Harkonnens is an act of revenge on the Atreides for taking away the spice production business. But Emperor Shaddam doesn't have any kind of enemy with the Atreides family, so he is supposed to be neutral in this situation rather than helping the Harkonnens. That's why his act of war will be considered a serious crime as it was a straight betrayal with the Atreides family. Something wrong? I don't recognize this place. This is the guest wing. This dude lives in a palace so big that some of the sections of his palace has been left unexplored. Can you imagine the wealth these people have? According to chapter 1, these Harkonnens have taken away almost 800 billion solaris worth of spice from Arrakis over the span of 80 years. So yeah, their money has been spent well. I recognize your footsteps, old man. Paul Atreides said the exact same thing two more times to Gurney Halleck in chapter one of this movie. How many times do we have to tell you? <clears throat> tell us you by your footsteps, Gurney Halleck. I recognize your footsteps, old man. Get up! After the Battle of Arrakeen, I was able to negotiate a trip back home for the survivors. So Gurney Halleck took the help of the smugglers to move the survivors of the Arakin ambush back to their Caladan planet. Does it mean that in chapter 3, the survivors from Caladan will come back to join Paul Atreides in the holy war against the great houses? How many heads exactly? Enough to blow up the whole planet. Yo, what the fuck? Don't resist. This is what the ancient voice whispered to the heirs of Paul Atreides. These are the same whispers that came to the mind of Paul in chapter 1 of the movie when he was fighting Jamis in the climax on the exact same valley Paul is standing right now. Listen carefully. Don't be frightened. Don't resist. Paul Atreides was about to die after drinking the water of life. But then, when Shani touches the lips of Paul with a drop full of tears and the water of life, he gets his consciousness back. And guess what? Every time in the Dune franchise, a character used to bounce back from a defeating situation, almost a similar kind of soundtrack used to play in the background. Listen carefully. This is the second time the word Dune was pronounced in the entire franchise. In chapter 1, the word Dune was pronounced for the first time by Baron Harkonnen. My Arrakis. My Dune. 
And guess what? Both of the situations have something similar in context. When Baron was planning to take the control of Arrakis, he pronounced the word Dune for the first time. And in chapter 2, when Paul Atreides was planning to take the control of Arrakis, he also pronounced the word Dune for the second time after Baron. <laughs> How does he know about the death of the grandmother of this guy who died almost 9 months ago? He also said that she lost one of her eyes when she was 12 years old. He was not even there in Arrakis to learn about that. He was not bluffing either. In case you have forgot, drinking the water of life gives access to the male and female ancestral memories of the drinker. Which means Paul Atreides has learned about this from the genetically inherited memories of his parents and ancestors. <laughs> What if I tell you that this simple footage actually has a very deep and controversial message? If you believe that these people are showing respect to Paul Atreides, you are absolutely wrong. The submission of the Fremen people to Paul Atreides has been fueled by the combination of fear and reward. The Fremen people have the fear of losing their lives to the Harkonnens, and then they have a desire of turning Arrakis into a beautiful planet. And Paul has the ability to become their savior as well as turning Arrakis into a beautiful planet. That's the main reason behind their devotion. It's not respect. It's the combination of fear and reward just like the religions on earth have in common. The religious prophets on earth also frightened people with hell and then lured people with heaven to join their cult. You should not leave the security perimeter! Security perimeter? The rats are already inside! The Fremen demon might be with them! Rid me of this Fremen demon. The Harkonnens used to call the Fremen people as demons. And then in chapter 1 of the movie, Duncan Idaho also said that the Fremen people fight like demons. I've never come so close to dying. There's no finer fighter in the Imperium. They fight like demons. This is Ramalo. She is a Bene Gesserit. She once drank the water of life which unlocked access to her female ancestral memories. But even after becoming a Bene Gesserit, she was never seen to be skeptical about the prophecies regarding Lisan al Ghaib, which was a pure propaganda by the Bene Gesserit sisterhood. So what's the point of becoming a Bene Gesserit if she also believes in these kinds of legends and fables? Or is there any way she is a Bene Gesserit agent who knows everything and yet pretends to believe believe in the prophecies. Unfortunately, the actual novel by Frank Harbert didn't have enough convincing information about this lady. So, maybe the complexity of her mind will always stay as an unresolved mystery. Rid me of this Fremen demon. <laughs>